He's the perfect combination of stiff upper lip, adorably floppy hair, and corny one-liners. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 cheesy Hugh Grant movie moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking back at some of Hugh Grant's naffest ever movie moments, including those that have since become iconic scenes in their own right. Number 10 Shag Therapy Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason Hugh Grant seemingly channeled his inner Austin Powers as Daniel Cleaver, Bridget Jones's sex-obsessed ex, especially in this 2004 sequel. Back off, Cleaver, or I'll report you to a sexual harassment tribunal. I'm a serious journalist. Is that your most serious skirt, Jones? The character features only briefly in author Helen Fielding's original follow-up novel, but Cleaver's role was beefed up for the film. And it's a good job too. Here, Cleaver reacquaints himself with Bridget, laying on some suitably sleazy lines in doing so. You still? You know? Yes, I am, and I intend to be for a very, very long time. Good, excellent. Well, you know what a fan I am of any woman married to Mark Darcy. Throughout the film, Grant's at his scene-stealing best, but this moment reminds us all of Daniel's morally questionable agenda. What about you? Still shagging anything that moves? As a matter of fact, no. No, no shagging whatsoever. I'm in shag therapy. Number 9. Let's Dance Florence Foster Jenkins This film may be most notable for allowing Meryl Streep to unleash some of the worst singing ever seen in cinema, but Hugh Grant also hits a few comical bum notes of his own, particularly with his moves on the dance floor. Hello, my dance oh, days are done. Grant came out of semi-retirement to play this role, and it was worth it for this epic display of 1940s awkward dancing. <laughs> this is a house party we'd all like to be at, even if Grant's character will insist on giving a faintly toe-curling performance. <laughs> Number 8. Weird Dream The Lair of the White Worm Almost any actor worth their salt has at least one film they did before they were particularly famous that they probably regret appearing in. For Grant, that film has to be forgotten 80s horror heap, The Lair of the White Worm. <laughs> Loosely based on the Bram Stoker novel of the same name, it's a largely forgettable film, save for one astonishingly bizarre dream sequence. Grant is front and center for a scene that features stockings, suspenders, wrestling, and the worst bit of phallic symbolism ever but to film, all wrapped up in a synthy soundtrack and cringy airline pilot setup. <laughs> Number 7 The Fight Bridget Jones's Diary Grant was truly in his element playing Bridget Jones's playboy love interest in the original Bridget Jones. I should have done this years ago. Done what? This. Switching between seductive and sleazy, Daniel Cleaver's cheesiest moment is probably shared with Colin Firth's Mark Darcy during the love rival's suitably childish fistfight at the end. <laughs> the actors famously improvised their on screen tussle without choreography of any kind in an attempt to make it look as juvenile and silly as possible. And as the end result proves, they definitely outdid themselves. It's raining now. It's raining now. Number 6 Forget About Dits Mickey Blue Eyes Despite arriving at the height of Grant's fame in the US, Mickey Blue Eyes became a largely forgettable crime comedy, save for this incredible and incredibly ridiculous moment. Hey, forget about it. Hey, forget about it. Co star James Kahn reportedly nicknamed Grant as Whippy because of his nervous nature on set, and his character's nerves were for all to see during this brilliantly bizarre exchange in which Khan tries to teach Hugh how to speak like a mobster. Get the hell out of here. No eyes. Get the hell out of here. His various attempts at saying the words forget about it are something to behold. Forget about it. Number 5. The Dance. Love Actually. 
Not for the first time, Hugh Grant's moves prove mighty memorable. This Christmas rom-com tends to divide popular opinion, but in Grant's lovable Prime Minister, audiences were at least treated to a political leader everyone could get behind. Grant even found time to tease co-star Billy Bob Thornton about his real-life fear of antique furniture, pointing out 500-year-old pieces to the American actor in between takes. All of which makes this astonishing bit of dad dancing to the pop hit Jump almost forgivable. Well, almost. Hugh has actually admitted that he doesn't like this scene, but the rest of us can't get enough. Mary, I've been thinking. Can we move the Japanese ambassador to four o'clock tomorrow? Certainly, sir. Number four, just a girl standing in front of a boy, Notting Hill. Coming after some iffy film projects and that infamous and embarrassing early 90s scandal of his, Notting Hill was arguably the movie which resurrected this affable Englishman's flagging film career. Can I just say no to your kind request and leave it at that? And its most memorable moment is easily this predictable but quotable declaration of love. True, much of the cheese is dealt out by Julia Roberts here, but Hugh's bumbling bashfulness helps ramp up the romantic tension to unprecedented heights. Uh, there are just too many pictures of you, too many films. You know, you'd go and I'd be, uh, well buggered, basically. After all, he's also just a boy standing in front of a girl. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Number three, is it still raining? Four weddings and a funeral. The film that kickstarted the Hugh Grant phenomenon. The story goes that he landed this part after playing a recording of his best man's speech at his brother's wedding. Whatever the truth, it did the trick, with Grant taking the first of many, many collaborations with filmmaker Richard Curtis. And this scene opposite Andy McDowell is a favourite for Four Weddings fans. For the first time in my whole life I realised I totally and utterly loved one person. And it wasn't the person standing next to me in the veil, it's the person standing opposite me now. Rounding off their relationship with a passionate embrace in the pouring rain, it's every bit as cliched as it sounds. In fact, this moment is part of the reason that rom-com cliches even exist. I do. Number two, pop goes my heart. Music and lyrics. Livesley based on the career experiences of Andrew Ridgely, the forgotten half of Wham, music and lyrics challenges Grant to sing. The plan had been for the film's vocal part to be dubbed over using a trained vocalist. However, after a bit of practice, he was convinced to sing all of it himself, including the big concert finale. I've been looking for someone to shed some light. Not somebody just to get me through the night. So, top marks for effort, but the entire thing is still built on being deliberately cheesy. That doesn't mean it's not brilliant, though. Number one, Killing Me Softly, about a boy. The rom-com specialist delivers arguably his finest performance as the emotionally stunted Will Freeman in this unprecedented adaptation of Nick Hornby's novel. Brad Pitt reportedly turned down the role of Will prior to Hugh taking the part, and it's a good job he did, because only Hugh could have ever made this final scene so painfully perfect. And that's definitely a compliment. Grant literally takes centre stage alongside a young Nicholas Holt for a defiant rendition of Killing Me Softly, displaying all of his character qualities that we've come to love. Integrity, awkwardness, self-deprecation, and cheese. Oh. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.